Hello Charmy, this is the four and a half month update on the big saltwater ecosphere. I thought it was four, but I didn't remember correctly. Anyway, I have a lot to tell and show you, so make sure you stick around. This species of solidified algae, Gracilaria vermiculophila, has been thriving in this closed ecosystem. It is slowly spreading throughout the entire ecosphere and it has been growing a lot. All the lighter parts of the solidified algae are young and have recently grown. In fact, this entire piece is new, clearly indicating that this species is spreading. It's very interesting how some species, an invasive one in this case, can do so well in a closed ecosystem, even without water movement. Now this is interesting. I don't know if this piece got torn off from a larger piece or if it emerged from a spore, but it seems healthy and doing quite fine. We have to keep paying attention to the Gracilaria vermiculophila. Even though it seemed to be a trend for the past few months that all the sea lettuce was rotting away and dying off, some parts, like this one, seem to be quite stable. I'm not really sure why. In fact, some new pieces that are growing on the glass are starting to get really big. It is quite exciting to see how new green life is growing in the ecosystem. You can see here that all different kinds of algae are growing on the glass. But this has to be the biggest piece. It reminds me a little bit of string algae, something you are probably all too familiar with if you ever had an aquarium. But I guess most algae look alike. You can clearly distinguish a few different species of algae in the ecosystem, which is good because they are very efficient in producing oxygen. Now let's take a look at all the animals that are living on the glass and in the sand. As you can see there's thousands of little worms, possibly snails and crustaceans. Then I saw this thing. At first I was really confused. I just couldn't figure out what it was. Now I actually think that this is one of those crustaceans which got caught by some sort of worm or tentacle. That or it's an alien. Well, uh, what is this? Well, this is inconvenient. Um, um, yeah, what are you looking at? You're completely ruining the shot. How am I supposed to work like this? Ah, oh, come on, dude. Could you please move out of the way? Thank you. Tss, unbelievable. Can you believe this guy? Um, where was I? Oh yeah, as I was saying, there's a lot of worms or tentacles sticking out of the sand. And I have no idea if they're tentacles from polychaetes or just nematodes. But they don't seem to be everywhere in the sand. Maybe they are only on this side because it is the side facing the window. Or because it's the side that is darker. Or because this side is warmer or colder. Or it could be that they haven't spread throughout the entire jar yet. So we'll have to keep a close eye on these as well. This however is a nematode and I'm a hundred percent sure about that. For those of you who haven't figured it out yet, this is a mold of the crab. The crab is alive and kicking. In fact, it is doing extraordinarily well. It has grown a lot. When you guys first saw him, 
he was still in his zoe larva stage. Now its back shield is already one and a half centimeters wide. Just look at his claws. Look how sharp they are. This boy is really turning into a big boy. I am completely fascinated by how this ecosystem is apparently stable enough that it can support such a big life form. I wondered what he was feeding off. Here you can see him poking around in the sand, looking for something to eat. I think his diet consists of bits of algae, small crustaceans and maybe even worms, and plankton, which he filters from the water. Every day I see him, I'm completely amazed by how a closed ecosystem that I created is able to maintain such a big organism. To make sure it can breathe and feed and to make sure its waste products are taken care of. Luckily, this species of crab doesn't get too big, only about twice this size in the wild, probably smaller in this jar. When I first saw him, I was afraid it would die, but that seems to be out of the question. Crabs lay tens of thousands of eggs, and only a few dozen of those make it into adulthood. So, I would say we're doing pretty well here. I can't really describe to you guys how I feel about this crab in this ecosphere that I made, but I can tell you this much, it's really special. Holy crab. The polychaete sand mason worm has moved again. As someone correctly pointed out, this is not a sand mason worm, but a spionid worm, a different type of polychaete worm, but with only two tentacles. These also build tubes, which you can see it doing here. I had some footage of the worm with a completed tube, but I cannot find it anywhere. I'm pretty sad about that, but if I ever find it, I'll show you. So I suddenly noticed all these nematodes, which I had never seen before. These also fall under the category of jiggly worms, by the way. I have no idea where they're coming from, but they seem to be growing in numbers. We have to keep a close eye on these as well. As you can see, they are freely swimming in the water, and are not living on the glass. The last thing I want to show you today is something that is very easy to see for me, but something that's very hard to film. And that's all the crustaceans swimming in the water. I'm talking about the crustaceans that aren't on the glass, but swimming freely in the water. The open ocean, as I like to call it, Pretty much every white dot you see is a crustacean, of some sort, in various shapes and sizes. That's pretty much all I have to say in this 4.5 month update. I think that there's more life in this ecosphere than there's ever been. And I think we can all agree that this ecosphere is doing really, really well. It didn't crash within a week, as many of you seem to believe would happen. So, if you want to see more updates and other projects, well, you're going to have to subscribe. And thanks for watching.